Hey there. Welcome to your personalized deep dive all about mountain biking. Awesome. You're interested in the history, okay. the different types of mountain biking, how many yeah. people are out there shredding trails yeah. and the environmental impact. So let's gear up and get rolling. Sounds good. Our main source for this deep dive is an academic textbook chapter all about outdoor recreation. Great. So, you know, we're starting with solid research. It's a great foundation for us. And I think you'll find some surprises along the way. Okay. Especially if you're used to just hopping on any bike and hitting the trails. Okay, so first things first. How did this whole mountain biking thing even start? Well, picture this. Marin County, California, mid-1970s. Yeah. A group of, All right. shall we say, adventurous folks. Yeah. Started modifying cruiser bikes. Yeah. Beefing them up to handle bumpy rides down mountain trails. Cool. They called these early bikes clunkers. Not exactly the sleek machines we're used to today. Ah, clunkers. I love it. It's amazing to think how far mountain biking has come from those humble beginnings. Yeah. Speaking of today, the first mountain bike actually hit the UK in 1983. Wow. And while there aren't any official sales figures kept, mm -hmm. it's pretty clear that mountain biking and cycling in general is huge over there. For sure. But I think you're ready to move past the general mountain bike label yeah. and get into the specifics. Right. It's kind of like saying car, sure, it gets you around. Right. But there's a whole world of variety depending on what you want to do. Exactly. And just like cars, Different types of mountain bikes are designed for different purposes. Let's break it down into a few main categories okay. instead of getting bogged down in a huge list. Sounds good. What do we have? First up are the speedsters. If you're all about covering ground quickly and efficiently, okay. then cross-country bikes are your best bet. Gotcha. These are lightweight machines built for endurance and climbing, right. perfect for those long-distance rides. Kind of like the marathon runners of the bike world, right? Exactly. Then you have bikes designed for more technical riding, mm -hmm. unnatural trails, the winding single track with roots and rocks. Right. Trail bikes fit this category. They're more rugged than cross-country bikes and can handle tougher terrain and descents. Got it. So if you're looking for more of an all-around experience, something that can handle a mix of climbs and descents, yeah. then enduro or all-mountain bikes are the way to go. They're like the versatile SUVs of the mountain biking world. A perfect analogy. Uh -huh. And then, of course, there are the adrenaline junkies who live for those heart-stopping descents. Mm -hmm. Downhill bikes are like the Formula One cars of the mountain biking world. Wow. They're built for pure speed and handling the most challenging terrain imaginable. Massive suspension and aggressive geometry are key here. And similar to downhill, but prioritizing strength over weight right. are free ride bikes. Yeah. These are for tackling big jumps and drops, pushing the limits of what's possible on a bike. Exactly. And then we have a whole other branch of mountain biking that's more about style and tricks. Okay. Think dirt jumping, urban, and street riding. Blending BMX with free ride. Those riders are like the acrobats of the biking world. I've seen some incredible videos online. They're definitely pushing the boundaries of what's possible on two wheels. Wow. And then there are a few specialized categories like slope style. Okay. Which is all about massive jumps and high speeds often seen in competitions Got it. and trials bikes, which were incredibly lightweight and nimble, yeah. designed for navigating obstacles and performing technical maneuvers. It's incredible how diverse the world of mountain biking really is, but I'm curious with yeah. all these different types of bikes and riding styles, uh -huh. just how many people are out there enjoying this sport? Well, let's look at participation numbers in the USA. Mm. Back in 2006, okay. BMX and mountain biking had 1,655,000 and 6,751,000 participants, respectively. But by 2016, right. those numbers jumped to 3,104,000 for BMX and a whopping 8,615,000 for mountain biking. Wow. Those are some serious numbers. Here's something that might surprise you. Biking in all its forms actually surpasses hiking in popularity in the USA. Really? It even rivals activities like jogging, trail running, and camping. Interesting. And get this, between 1999 and 2001, over 44 million people in the USA hopped on a mountain or hybrid bike. Wow. So, yeah, it's safe to say that mountain biking is far from a niche hobby. It sounds like it's more popular than many people realize. Yeah. And it's not just limited to the USA, right? Definitely not. The sport's popularity is growing all over the world. Yeah. Especially in countries like Germany, Switzerland, Austria, and Australia. 
So we've got millions of people worldwide hitting the trails on all these different types of bikes. But with that kind of popularity, it's important to consider the impact, right? I mean, every activity has an environmental footprint. Yeah. And mountain biking is no exception. You're absolutely right. We've talked about the fun and excitement of mountain biking. But it's crucial to be aware of the potential downsides. Mm -hmm. And that's what we'll explore in the next part of our deep dive. Okay, sounds good. Okay. So we've established mountain biking is a global phenomenon. It is. But as you just mentioned, right. it's important to think about the impact all those tires on the trails are having. Right, right. absolutely. <laughs> While there's no doubt mountain biking brings a lot of economic benefits. Yeah. I think tourism, sporting events, yeah. a whole industry built around it. Mm. We can't ignore the potential negative impacts on the environment. Right. It's about finding that balance. Yeah between enjoying the sport and preserving the places we ride. Makes sense. So what are some of the environmental concerns when it comes to mountain biking? Well, one of the biggest impacts is on the soil and vegetation. Okay. Building and using trails can lead to erosion, mm -hmm. soil compaction, water runoff, right. and loss of plant life. Yeah. And it's not just about the trails themselves. Think about all the infrastructure that goes along with mountain biking destinations. Okay. Parking lots, restrooms, yeah. all of that can contribute to habitat fragmentation and disrupt the natural flow of ecosystems. And then there's the impact on wildlife. Yeah. The noise from all those bikes and just our presence in general can mm -hmm. disturb animals, For sure. causing stress, altered behavior, and even displacement from their habitats. You're right. And it's important to remember that competitive mountain biking can often magnify these negative effects. Right. Just imagine the intensity of a race yeah. with riders going full speed down those challenging courses. It's bound to have a more noticeable impact on the environment. That makes sense. The textbook actually highlighted a study by Taylor and Knight oh, yeah. that looked at how wildlife respond to mountain bikers compared to hikers. Interesting. What's interesting is that they found wildlife generally reacts similarly to both groups. Yeah. However, because mountain bikers typically cover more ground and travel at higher speeds. Right. They have the potential to disturb a larger number of animals overall. Yeah. It's something to be mindful of when you're out there on the trails. It's like we're enjoying the ride, yeah. feeling that connection with nature, <laughs> but maybe not realizing the full extent of our impact. So what can be done to minimize these negative effects? The good news is there's a lot of effort being put into managing mountain biking in a more sustainable way. Okay. One of the key strategies is responsible trail design, construction, and maintenance. Right. If the trails themselves are built with sustainability in mind, yes. that's a huge step in the right direction. Exactly. Things like choosing appropriate locations, uh -huh. minimizing the width and number of trails, okay. using sustainable materials, okay. and incorporating drainage features to control erosion can make right. the big difference. Yeah. And it's not just about building new trails responsibly. Right. It's also about maintaining existing ones. So things like regular upkeep and repairs can help prevent further damage. Exactly. Yeah. But responsible trail management is only one part of the solution. Okay. Education plays a crucial role as well. So educating mountain bikers themselves about how to minimize their impact. Precisely. The International Mountain Biking Association, yeah. or IMBA, uh -huh. has a fantastic set of guidelines called the Rules of the Trail. Oh, cool. They promote responsible riding practices. Okay. Such as staying on designated trails, uh, true. controlling your speed, right. respecting wildlife, mm -hmm. and packing out everything you pack in. Leave no trace, as they say. I love that. It's about taking ownership of our actions yeah. and realizing that even small choices can make a difference. Exactly. Mm. And beyond IMBA's guidelines, there are many education programs specifically designed to teach mountain bikers about minimizing soil impact, okay. reducing water pollution, right. and respecting right. wildlife. Cool. It's about understanding how our actions affect the environment and making conscious choices to minimize our footprint. That's so important. It's not enough to just love mountain biking. We have to love and respect the places we ride, too. Are there any real-world examples of successful efforts to balance mountain biking with environmental protection? There are, actually. One great example highlighted in the, the textbook is the UK Forestry Commission. Okay. They've done an amazing job of integrating tourism and recreation uh -huh. 
including mountain biking, right. with their commercial forestry operations. You mean they're managing to balance the economic benefits of forestry with the recreational and environmental value of the forest? Yes. That sounds like a win-win situation. Exactly. And it's been a huge success. Awesome. One of their most notable projects is the Seven Stains Project in Southern Scotland. Okay. They've created a world-class mountain biking destination that attracts thousands of visitors each year. Wow. Boosting the local economy while also preserving the natural beauty of the region. It sounds like they've found that sweet spot where everyone benefits. They have. And the Seven Stains mm -hmm. Project is a great example of how careful planning, yeah. collaboration, right. and a commitment to sustainability can lead to positive outcomes for both people and the planet. It's inspiring to see examples like that. Right. It proves that mountain biking can be a force for good in the world. It definitely can. Oh. And remember, it's not just about large-scale projects like the Seven Their Tones. Yeah. Every individual rider, trail builder, and land manager has a role to play in ensuring the future of mountain biking and protecting the places we love to ride. So what does all this mean for someone like you listening who is interested in getting into mountain biking? What are the key takeaways? Well, first and foremost, do your research. Okay. Understand the different types of mountain biking. Mm -hmm. Find trails that match your skill level and learn about responsible riding practices. Don't just jump on any bike and hit any trail, right? Exactly. Take the time to learn the basics and understand the impact you can have. Exactly. Ah. And don't hesitate to connect with your local mountain biking community. There are clubs and organizations all over the world that can provide valuable information. Yeah. Connect you with experienced riders. Cool. And help you find trails that are right for you. It's all about being part of the community and sharing that passion for the sport while also respecting the environment. That's what it's all about. Remember, mountain biking isn't just about the individual ride. Yeah. It's about the collective experience and the legacy we leave behind. So gear up, get out there, and ride responsibly. All right, we've covered a lot of ground in our mountain biking deep dive from the history and evolution of the sport yeah. to the mind-blowing variety of bikes right. and the ever-growing number of people hitting the trails. And of course, we can't forget the environmental impact. It's been great unpacking the challenges and exploring solutions for more sustainable mountain biking practices. For sure. It really highlights how we can all contribute to protecting the places we love to ride. Exactly. It's all about finding that sweet spot between the thrill of the ride and being responsible stewards of the environment. But before we wrap up, yeah. I think it's important to leave you with a final thought, okay. something to ponder as you embark on your own mountain biking adventures. I agree. And the question we want to leave you with is this. With mountain biking continuing to grow in popularity, mm -hmm. how can we ensure a balance between the thrill of the ride and the preservation of our natural environments. It's a question that deserves careful consideration from all of us, riders, yeah. trail builders, yeah. land managers, mm -hmm. and everyone who loves this amazing sport. It's a challenge for sure, but hey, the best rides often involve a bit of a challenge, right? Absolutely. And remember, the more we learn and understand about the impact of mountain biking, yeah. the better equipped we are to make informed decisions and contribute to a sustainable future for the sport. Okay. Keep exploring, uh -huh. keep questioning, right. and keep riding responsibly. Well said. I hope this deep dive has given you a solid understanding of the world of mountain biking, from its humble beginnings to the complex questions surrounding its future. And remember, it's not just about the individual ride. Yeah. It's about being part of a community that respects the environment and works together to ensure that mountain biking can be enjoyed for generations to come. So, until next time, happy trails.